And when all you see Is the world just fall apart again Look for me Honey, there I'll be Yeah, and piece by piece I'll pick you right back up and start again pad you have here so thank you thanks for noticing yeah it's uh it's our new house yeah we uh we bought it we moved in in like two days before christmas so uh yeah this is this is one of the rooms that's done um yeah. there's a lot of rooms that aren't done <laughs> this is very fun very grown up as well well this... thank you very much yeah yeah, yeah well i i am um, I got this this Chesterfield sofa from my parents, so it makes me it makes me look a lot more distinguished than I am. <laughs> yeah, well, I, th I think you're you're kind of moving into that era now, aren't you? You're kind of settling down and Chesterfield. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've got my gray my gray hairs coming in and my Chesterfield sofas. This is my new era. <laughs> How are you I'm doing? For it. I'm good. I'm good. It's lovely to see you. Lovely to see you. It's been a long time. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, Not at all. Thank you. Have you still got your little dog? Uh, complicated answer. Yes, he lives with my sister. He was my sister's dog. Um, not a lot of people know this. He, he originated with her. And then when she had children, because he's a very, very neurotic dog, he just didn't really cope with there being babies in the house and it made him very anxious. So I sort of was only ever looking after him for a while and then lockdown hit um kind of around that time so he had this kind of stay of execution at my house he was only ever supposed to be there temporarily and he ended up living with me for four years all through covid so um but it was quite cool because when when you know lockdown lifted and i was back to kind of proper touring schedule my sister's kids were kind of at the perfect age to have a dog and so he's gone back to live with her and i get to look after him when they go away and i i get to come visit him and uh yeah he's still going strong i don't really know how because he was he was old when he came to me but he's he's a, he'll outlive us all <laughs> oh you obviously did a great job at being a, a dog auntie <laughs> I, I don't know about that i guess so he's um he's very very neurotic and very anxious about everything but he's he's now he's like completely deaf because he's getting on a bit and he's um he's like a much calmer dog to be around since he's completely deaf because he doesn't he used to bark at everything and these days he just doesn't hear anything so he's in his own world little old maybe, frank yeah maybe that's the secret to, to a long life <laughs> i think so yeah 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 not being, anyway not sorry, being I, bothered by anything i didn't summon you here to talk about dogs <laughs> <laughs> I could do it for hours. I, I just remember the last time we had a Zoom, you had a, a, a um, you had him on your lap, and it was. Uh... Mm. Yeah, he was. He was. A, he was a big intruder of Zooms. That was around the around the time I think the Zooms were very big, and he yeah. was. He never wanted to miss out on one. Mm. Yeah, yeah, they like that. You, you might get a bit of my cat in the moment. Well, usually Great. my cat's my cat's ass is what um, <laughs> is in, in Zooms. So. Uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, more interestingly, you have you have an album out, um, build something better, which um, which is amazing. Um, we, we've just commissioned a, a review by um, one of your biggest super fans, uh, Lisa. Oh, oh, cool! Oh, wow! Yeah, she's she's well. Now... If I if I get a bad review from her, then when things are really going to hell, I mean, <laughs> spoilers. She she loved it. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, yeah, she's now officially our our Grace Petrie correspondent. That's great. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, so yeah, I I just wanted to share a little quote. So the, the album is called "Build Something Better." It's out eighth of March, which is International Working Women's Day, which seems a really appropriate day for mm. you as an international working woman to be <laughs> releasing an album. Um, but yeah, little little quote from her, little um, little teaser from her review. She says, this is her most eclectic album yet, mixing in a bigger, poppier sound alongside more traditional folk band backing and tender acoustic guitar songs rep reminiscent of her early career, um, which I, I thought was, was just a, a beautiful summing up of, of, of what this album is. I mean, I, I've, I've known you for a, a long time. Mm -hmm. Longer than than we'll we'll admit because that will <laughs> reveal our age. <laughs> how long we've been banging this drum. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, this this album kind of feels like the the ultimate Grace Petrie state of the nation address. Here, it's like bringing together all of the elements that 
um that your your fans kind of know and love you for um and and adding like an extra layer of of glitter um mm. which, um which is maybe the the Frank Turner producer showbiz <laughs> kind of element that um, that's been brought to this um so it, it really kind of feels that um, ev everything that that we've known and loved about you for years is kind of being catapulted into the mainstream here um discuss <laughs> well yeah I mean it's funny because um so I think it, it, so uh, connectivity was my last album before this which was 2021 and that was really I mean um I don't want to say apolitical because I really do firmly believe you know there's no such thing as apolitical art but it was it wasn't a protest album I would say you know um obviously that was a very introspective time for all of us we'd all been you know, in the house for two years. Um, I hadn't been able to gig for the first time in my life, you know, since I picked up a guitar as a teenager. I had, that was the longest time that I'd ever gone without gigs. And I really turned very in, inward. I think the songwriting on that was very sort of in, no, I don't want to say inward looking, but it was quite introspective. And then when that was out in the world, I um, I, I really kind of got massively more into not that I ever left kind of into political writing, but I was very immersed in it again. And I was really, I was talking to my partner, Molly Naylor, who's on this tour with me, uh, that um, my my major thing, I think it, it was it was difficult to write. I've put that on social media a few times, but it was difficult to write this record because I found that, you know, I feel very desperate politically. I feel, you know, that is the only word really. I feel despairing. Um, and uh, And I was saying to her, you know, I don't, I feel like I don't know what to say because I, I don't want to just say to people everything is terrible, but that's how I feel. And she said to me, it was like a great piece of advice. She said, but other people feel like that as well. And they want to know that they're not alone. So it is a bit of a howl of rage, I think, this record. And, and um, you know, there's there's like one or two kind of elements that I hope of, of optimism on there. But ultimately, there's a lot of kind of, I'd say, yeah, maybe a bit of a return to the very early days of when I first started doing what we might call protest songs in that it, it, it was a real sort of, you know, I like I like the the phrase state of the nation address. It's it's a real it's a real kind of this is where we are and look how fucking terrible everything is, you know. Um, but I also did, you know, I did want to experiment with some bigger production and I wanted to kind of move into more of a kind of big band sound, I guess, and a, and a bit more of a poppy production. And I really, I really wanted to work with Frank as a producer, you know, we, we toured together in 2019 and I absolutely love him. And I think that he's, he's, um, he's one of my favorite songwriters and, you know, particularly some of his kind of poppier sounds. I feel like they're what I've always kind of been striving for, you know? And I mean, I think, you know, when I started out, I didn't, I didn't have any, money you know I mean I still don't really have any money but I really didn't have any money to make records you know all of my albums you know before like Queer as Folk none of them were made in a studio they were all made on an absolute shoestring and I guess I did always have these big bigger arrangements in my head but I was very very limited by the resources so it's kind of nice to sort of be at this at this point where I have I've kind of got the rage of the songs and I've kind of got the I've got the ability and the resources and some phenomenal musicians and I've got Frank to sort of translate it into what I kind of hoped it hoped it could could be. So it was a lot of fun to make and and you know he it, Frank's just like been absolutely wonderful throughout the whole process because I don't I'm, I'm not a natural recorder. I think I said this to you last time I find recording very very difficult. It's my worst my least favorite part of the job by a long way. I think I'm much much more you know 100% more comfortable on stage I'm a I'm a performer that's what I, I'm, I'm good at um and I'm not remotely a recorder I don't think that I'm very good at the kind of science of it all I'm not good at the zooming in on things I'm not good at listening back to something under a magnifying glass you know 50 times to sort of listen to all the ways that you fucked it up you know and whereas Frank is much more he's very analytical you know he he loves that stuff he's a real nerd about kind of getting into the real sort of nitty gritty of the layers of, of the song so it was it was he was a dream a dream producer for me and I think the the yeah the results of his his input I think are, are, are hugely there in a, in a wonderful way. Yeah definitely you can tell that it's been produced by by someone who who knows you and knows how to to get the the best out of you because yeah. Mm. yeah. 
some of, some of the essence of grace i hope so yeah i really hope so because it because you know it was um like i said you know it was it was a it wasn't easy some songs you know you you know you just like dash off some songs and a lot of these songs they were they were they were painstaking you know over months and years i mean it's three years since i released connectivity and you know so many lyrical rewrites and um and there was a lot of things that went on the album went off the album lots of things got cut you know the order changed a million times the the um arrangements changed a million times so uh, yeah i wouldn't say it was one that i just um I just dashed off. <laughs> no, you can tell. Um, and a, a bit of a country vibe as well. I've, I've put on my notes here, what would Beyonce do? <laughs> Which is kind of my, my mantra at the moment. <laughs> so you, you've got a little bit... A great, a great mantra for life, I think, yeah, that we should I, I all need, live by. When I need that on a T-shirt, I think. Um, yeah, the house always wins. Um, I, I was just listening to, and I, I'd literally just been listening to Beyonce as well. So I, I'm, I'm working on a bit of a mashup here. <laughs> <laughs> the mashup of my dreams, trust me. Yeah. I mean, am, yeah. am, am, am I uh, saying the right thing? Would, would you describe that song as country or is? Um, is yeah, it... I mean, there's a lot of different things on all of them. I, I mean, I, I, yeah, it's very sort of Americana, um, yeah. and uh, yeah, sort of country Americana. I mean. Um, that was one that really changed a lot during the production. I mean, it's funny because when I first sent Frank some of the demos, I said to him, um, uh, I did use I did use the word mainstream. I said I kind of um, I'm sort of feeling like some of these songs could go in a bit more of a mainstream direction. And obviously what I forget is that the word mainstream is not a fixed, that's not a genre. Like what's mainstream changes all of the time. So he sent me back something that was very mainstream and it was like all synths and uh, and it was not something that I, it was, ve yeah, it was very like, it was, yeah, it was, it was kind of, I mean, I wouldn't even, I, would, I was about to reference some contemporary bands to say that's who it sounded like and I wouldn't even know. But, um, <laughs> But I and we had to have this conversation where I, where he was like, okay, so what did you mean? And I was like, I guess I meant more like um, more like Natalie and Bruglia. And he was like, okay, cool. Like, <laughs> it's like yeah, cool. Like once once upon a time that was mainstream, not not for twenty years or so. But uh, but yeah, I guess um, we all we all we all kind of um, the pop music of our youth, I think, lives in our hearts forever, doesn't it? So, but oh, but yeah, the 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 house always wins was one that I I definitely um the sort of Turner was turned up to 11 in that one and all of the kind of like yeah the swelling kind of country guitar solos they were all him and I just think they just totally set the song on fire I think it was brilliant and when I heard it was when I heard his arrangement um when I first heard his arrangement back on the masters that was when I first had the idea for the video with a magician so the video we made for that is with this magician who's kind of um who is Rob Tay who is one half of um uh, Morgan and West uh duo of magicians who are just phenomenal and he was brilliant in the role and he sort of dressed up as this tory politician and he and in the video we're kind of playing poker and he he's just like constantly sort of turning his cards from like twos into aces and um you know like p pulling things out of his sleeves and it was absolutely amazing but i only really got the idea for that when i heard frank's kind of take on the song back and i was like oh yeah this 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 says to me like kind of old school like you know, saloon bar casino, you know what I mean? And so I think that was the kind of country influence there as well. Brilliant. Yeah, it's just kind of cementing yourself as um as the, the UK's answer to Taylor Swift. <laughs> hope so. Hope Taylor so, Swift. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're on, on tour at the moment with a full band, which I've I've never yes. seen you with a full band before. Is this is no. uh, first? people have um i've done a few festival shows with a full band this is my first time touring with a full band and they are such a great bunch of musicians oh my god i'm i'm just so lucky to have all of them so i've got ben moss on fiddle who has been a long time collaborator who i've done a lot of tours with um who's just a phenomenal musician and he's you know i mean he's like a swiss army knife ben i mean he's um he can play the fiddle but he can play the mandolin and the banjo and the keys and absolutely everything so he's playing a bunch of piano as well on this uh, on this tour and then I've got Jasmine Kennedy, who's a phenomenal singer songwriter and a really like long, long time dear, dear friend of mine, who just has a voice that will absolutely break your heart. Um, and then I have uh, Amy Thatcher and Francesca Knowles, who are also a phenomenal folk duo in their own right, and they're opening up these shows. Um, so Amy's on accordion and Fran is on drums. 
And then in their duo set, they also play all kinds of things that I don't understand, synthesizers and kind of loops and things. It's all Greek to me, but it's unbelievably impressive to watch. Um, and then on the lead guitar, um, I have Robbie Gatt, who is probably best known as the lead guitarist from Personal Best. Um, one of my best, my favorite bands, one of my favorite, I think the the band who did one of my Desert Island is favorite records of all time, Arnos Vale. Um, and I feel like, you know, me and them have been kind of on the same scene and we've been friends for years and years and years. And we've always been kind of circling each other from a distance being like, hey, we'd, we'd, we'd love to make it happen one day. And, you know, they've always been busy with a million bands and I've always been busy with a million things. And um, and they're, and now like the timing's worked and, and I'm so thrilled to be playing with them because I think I've always thought that they're a phenomenal musician. And, uh, and as, as a whole- I didn't exactly with Rob, because Robin's also in Yaki. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, Jane Starling's new band that um, that played at um, at the Album Fest this year. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've been meaning to try and catch them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what a dream team! What an absolute lineup of heroes! I'm just, and it's just so nice to hang out with them all. You know, we're just having the best time. And you know, me and Ben, we've 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 obviously toured together so much, and we're very very comfortable with each other on stage and and off stage. But you know, it's it's so cool to have all those extra layers and like. And because they're all so amazing, you know, in their own right, like the, I just feel like the live show was elevated so much. You know, we, we did the first full band show in Manchester on Friday. And I do think it was my favorite gig I've done in my whole life. I said that on stage, I was like, I don't think I've ever felt so elated as I did on stage where I was just hearing all these incredible interpretations of, of all their different parts. And uh, yeah, they're a real, real dream team. I'm very, very lucky. Oh, amazing. I can't wait to see this. Yeah, I can't wait for you to see it. I mean, how, are you going to go back to to working solo after you've had this kind of dream experience? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of yeah, kind of depends on the purse strings. I mean, I I made the I made the call to bring the band pretty late in the day. Um, so for full disclosure, I should say that um, Frank. Uh, so basically, I recorded the acoustic guitars and the vocals, and uh, at his down at his his place in Essex and. And then I went away and, you know, he, he, I said to him, kind of do whatever you want with it. Right. And he kind of put all these amazing things on and I got the masters back. And my first thought was, this sounds fucking awesome. And my second thought was, I don't know how I'm ever going to play this live. <laughs> so, uh, so I kind of made the call pretty late in the day and, and like, you know, to be very transparent, like it's a financial sort of, um, shot in the dark, you know what I mean? Um, obviously it's a lot of mouths to feed and uh you know it's 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 just me here you know I, there's no record label there never has been like everything that i put into the record is kind of my own out of my own pocket and everything i put into the toys out of my own pocket but i really wanted at least once i really wanted to just give these songs and these arrangements that frank did in such a beautiful way i wanted to give them the best chance you know i wanted to put them out into the world bit like kind of when you send your children off to school you know what I mean I really wanted to make sure that they had everything that they needed to just saw and uh and I mean I think it'll be hard it'll be hard for me to get back to solo touring I think is the answer to that so yeah hopefully people will buy a lot of tickets and buy a lot of records and we can we can just we can keep on doing it yeah oh well we'll help um we'll help spread the word about your oh about your thank you I'll, I'll get this video out um as soon as I can. Um, what else can I ask you about? Is, is any summer plans? I, I mean, I'll, I'll cut this out if I'm not allowed to mention this yet, but I, did I see somewhere that you might be playing at the Glastonbury Park stage? Are you not, are you not allowed to say? Can I see? No, I am, I am allowed to say, and I think I should say, for people who saw that so-called leaked lineup and were devastated, I am categorically not playing at the Park stage at Glastonbury. Ooh. I wish I was. And like, that's just a lesson for all of you guys to not believe everything you read on the internet. So I can't comment on the veracity of the rest of that so-called leaked lineup, but I can tell you that it, it tickled me no end when I saw that. I thought, fucking hell, man. Yeah, I should be so lucky. Um, yeah, so far, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say. Yeah. Oh, I am allowed to say it is announced. Doing Beautiful Days, uh, Festival Down in Devon. Um, I'm going to be in Canada for most of July. So I'm doing festival season over there. Um, and a few other bits and bobs in the UK as well. So, but I'll also be in I'll be in Australia in May. So I'm doing the Guilty Feminist tour in Australia, and then some stuff in the UK, and then uh, Canada in July, and then I am getting married in August as well. So, uh, 
congratulations yeah thank you very much yeah so um so that's kind of uh I'll be spending a lot of my summer planning that but uh, hopefully you'll see me pop up a, a, a few other festivals as well oh if you need a wedding band um <laughs> you know who to call oh this is thanks very movie. much yeah that thank you that was something that I was going to mention that um that Beth had picked up in in her review of your album how kind of you know positive and uplifting your your love songs were and obviously you're uh, you're in a you're in a happy place which is which is lovely um it is, is it is it is lovely and and I've sort of been I've kind of been joking on stage um Robin Gatt actually said to me uh when I'd sent them the the record for ahead of rehearsing they texted me and said um this is kind of a concept album and the concept album is like half the songs are really 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 depressing and then the other half of the songs are you're in love and you're really happy and uh it really made me laugh and I've been saying on stage yeah it's a, it's a concept album about being depressed about living in England but also conversely being in a very happy relationship so um it's a funny thing because you know my my fiance and I we got together during lockdown we sort of had this months and months on the phone where she was in Norwich and I was in Leicester and we were just having these kind of three hour a day phone calls um with no way of knowing if or or when we would ever be able to actually meet up in person and um and you know it, it all it all worked out great and it's it's been a funny thing for but I think there's a lot of people who kind of had kind of relationships or really happy things happen during lockdown and you did sort of feel this guilt of like gosh the world is going through this really terrifying time but at the same time you know I think it was like you know there's a line in in one of the songs on the record where I, I feel like the world stopped for us to meet each other and we just had this kind of endless amounts of time to just really get to know each other and um and I, I'll always be really grateful for it you know yeah no it, it's it's a perfect way to get together in, in some really odd way but yeah it does allow you to just connect on on those really important yeah uh, it was very chaste for a long time I'll tell you that it was very <laughs> Lots and lots and lots of phone calls, yeah. Oh, oh I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. Thanks. Another thing I was going to mention is your um your show. Um, Mr. Fox and I came to see you in uh Leicester Square Theatre. Oh, you did. Oh, <laughs> oh thank you very much. It was the last night, wasn't it? Of your um, what's it called? M M M Butcher do about nothing. about nothing yeah yeah oh thanks very much oh, i'm sorry i didn't see you there yeah you yeah that was good, that good people hearing are you, are you seeing these little thumps is it just me seeing this no one just then i don't know um i don't know how that happened know, it's, it's just zoom giving us feedback on our content maybe <laughs> you guys are doing great keep it up <laughs> <laughs> encouragement <laughs> Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, anyway, <laughs> back to the interview. Um, it it was great. We, we absolutely loved your show. It was, um, you know, kind of properly laugh out loud funny and not in a kind of we're here to support Grace and we're going to kind of chuckle along. Yeah, another thumbs up for that. <laughs> <laughs> it was proper laugh out loud funny and you made me cry. Um, and, <laughs> uh, and, and you made me kind of think about things that, that I hadn't perhaps kind of considered as a um straightish <laughs> um everybody's straightish these days aren't they <laughs> <laughs> yeah well you've, you've seen me after a few glasses of wine <laughs> <laughs> um anyway um yeah I, I love the show and and I hope that um I mean it sounds like you've got a really busy year coming up but are you going to have time for more of that sort of thing because it, yeah, it i think i think we we are we're going to do one more um uh which, which we're going to film um and then that's going to be available you know on online to stream so um yeah because it's it's funny it's kind of i've never done an edinburgh show before and and obviously what i do you know well what all of us do with music it's it's not really um it's not contained it's not finite in the same way you know when you sort of do you you write one show for edinburgh and I'm, I've always been really impressed and amazed how comedians can do this, where they write an hour and they do it and then they never do it again, basically. And it's sort of strange because, you know, like I'm playing, I'm just still playing songs that I was playing, you know, 14 years ago. So um, it's a funny one to sort of kind of put a cork in it and throw it out to sea and go, I guess, I guess that's, that's that over, you know? So it's, I'm glad that there's going to be a, a video of it just as a, kind of for posterity kind of thing um, but it was an amazing experience and I really enjoyed doing it I, I mean it was just something that I really felt 
like I needed to say, you know, I mean, just like briefly, I guess if people haven't seen the show, it's sort of an exploration of butch lesbian identity and, um, you know, my kind of, my hope for it was that it would be a bit of a kind of call to arms for solidarity across the queer community and, and a rejection of sort of transphobic ideology. Um, and I found it really, 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 really cathartic doing it. I talked about a lot of the things that I felt when I was growing up, you know, I, I was very insecure about my presentation in the world for a very long time. And um, that's something that you really feel like you're on your own with, you know, you feel like that's only happening to you. And then actually getting out to go and tour this show, I was amazed actually how many people got in touch with me and how many became to the show and said, God, you know, like I felt like you were talking about my life. Um, so that was really, really cathartic. And, and you know, I, I like to think, I mean, I, I always say this, that, you know, there's a line in one of my songs where I sort of say, you know, like you, you're going to be so happy. And I, I think back to that teenager that I was that sort of could never have imagined. Honestly, I was so terrified of the word lesbian, let alone butch. You know, I was so insecure about all of it. The idea that I would ever not only be like very proud to be a butch lesbian, but to be sort of like going out on stage and talking about that very thing and have it front and center, you know, not be hiding, hiding behind it or, or trying to conceal it from people. I think that's, um, it's, 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 it's cool for me to think back at, to that teenager and like, wow, like you, you're going to come so far kid. You've got no idea. <laughs> so, yeah. So I, the, the, hopefully there will be more comedy. Um, I'm kind of thinking about maybe doing another Edinburgh run in 2025 with a whole new show. So yeah, lots to do. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, but let, allow yourself a honeymoon first. And... Yes, yeah, yeah, that's in the diary. Yeah. Um, cool. Okay. Well, thank thank you so much, Grace, for um, giving give me your time today. No, thank you. Thanks very much. I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, it's, it. It's March, isn't it? That you um, you... it's March. I'm out. Yeah, so I'm already out on the road now. Um, and uh, I don't know when this will go up, but I'm in in Kendall, Edinburgh, and Newcastle next week, and then onwards to some of the more southern dates. Um, London is on the 14th of March um, and the record is out on the 8th of March. Um, the thing that I'm trying to say to people and really kind of give them the hard sell as much as I can is that um, all of the pre-sales, all of the pre-orders of the record count towards the chart position. Um, and last time, you know, when I brought a connectivity, we, I never expected in a million years that I would ever, ever see the chart and uh so it was only like halfway through release week that i i was told the the kind of midweek sales figures and i was like oh god i think this might actually get in the chart so i did this ridiculous last minute plea on twitter just going by the way sorry i didn't mention this before now but i think actually this might get in the chart if you buy it and uh and we made it we made it to number 37 um but this time you know i've got um john helps who is is the um otherwise known as Robot Needs Home Collective, who's releasing the record. And I've got Alex Knight who comes on the road with me and, and, and that's our kind of little team. And they've been saying to me since day one, like, don't be afraid to say to people, we're, we're aiming for the chart. So, you know, like, uh, say it with your chest kind of thing. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying, this time I'm trying to say before, you know, 24 hours before the, the charts close, I'm trying to say uh, your sales are much appreciated because it's cool. It's cool when independent records do well in the charts and, you know, that stuff really so, does help you know it really helps in terms of getting gigs and getting festivals and stuff so so anybody anybody watching or listening it's um it would be uh really really helpful if anybody wanted to pre-order the record cool we'll share the links so that people can thank do you exactly that. all right thanks so much grace lovely to see you and lovely so to see you mate all right take care That's take lovely. care i'll pick you right back up